welcome to another Form DME. Uh, today we're going to start an uh, antibiotic review and we're going to start with Rocephin. Uh, I'm going to try to kind of focus on some of the uh, most used antibiotics in the hospital. I think I didn't actually do the research on it, but if I had to guess, Rocephin is the number one used antibiotic in uh, the hospital that I work at. All right, so characteristics. It is a third generation cephalosporin. Um, it's, uh, it has a, a longer half-life for a cephalosporin. It's eight hours, which allows for uh, daily dosing. Um, it is resistant to beta-lactamases and can cross into uh, the CNS. All right, as for uses, it um, will be used for respiratory tract infections, specifically lower respiratory tract infections. Uh, UTIs, it's used very often for UTIs. Um, skin and soft tissue infections, bone and joint. Um, gonorrhea, a lot of times you'll see a patient in the ER, maybe it's labor delivery, and they'll get a 250 milligram dose uh, IM uh, along with a gram of azithromycin. And that would be uh, for gonorrhea. Um, it can be used for sepsis, intra-abdominal, uh, surgical prophylaxis. And then uh, finally, the, uh, it cr since it crosses into the CNS, it can be used for uh, meningitis. All right, as for the microbiology, I didn't uh, put every single thing in here. I just kind of focused on some of the main ones. Uh, it's mostly going to be used for gram-negative organisms. So E. coli, H. flu, Klebsiella, uh, there's the gonorrhea and the meningitis, um, Mirabilis and Serratia. Um, it does not cover Pseudomonas. If you look in some of the older package inserts, it says that uh, it can be used for certain strains of Pseudomonas, but basically if you see Pseudomonas or you suspect Pseudomonas, you will not be using Rocephin. Um, I guess I should go back to our original uh, slide here. So uh, Ceftriaxone is the, uh, the drug name and the, or the scientific name, and Rocephin would be the brand name. All right. Um, I'll usually refer to it as Rocephin along with, so will most hospital uh, staff, whether it be nursing doctors, other pharmacists, techs. Um, it's definitely one of those where the brand name uh, is still what's used the most. All right. Um, it, while it can be used for gram positives, typically if... Um, uh, if you suspect a gram positive, you probably wouldn't use um, something like this. You would uh, maybe use a first-generation cephalosporin, uh, ANCEF, uh, cefazolin, or, or uh, you know, maybe vancomycin, or, or uh, nafcillin, things of that nature. Typically, you wouldn't use this, although you could. So if you... Um, if the micro reports come out and it is sensitive to rocephin, you, you certainly could use it on gram positives, but, but not typically. Um, and then in terms of anaerobes, uh, the C. diff, it is res uh, will be resistant to rocephin. So uh, it won't work on C. diff. It actually can cause C. diff. So. Um, in terms of administration, uh, it can be, it's either IM or IV. Um, so if somebody is on Rocephin and they leave the hospital, you would need to change uh, drugs altogether. That'll usually be to Ceftonir. Um, so yeah, if they're, if they're uh, getting discharged or if your hospital has an IV to PO protocol or something, you, you, you'd actually have to change drugs. Um, so for the IM administration, uh, if, you'll, um, if you look in the package insert, uh, you will um, see where in the, this says MLs. It's supposed to be milligram concentrations. Um, if you look in the package insert or you go to Micromedics or Lexicomp or what have you, uh, whenever you, um, you go to dilute the Rocephin, uh, these will be the two concentrations and they'll give you the amounts to make those concentrations. And then obviously you just do the calculations to pull the dose. 
So if you um, say you needed that 250 milligram um, dose to give someone with gonorrhea, you can just do the 250 uh, milligrams per ml concentration and then just give them one ml. Um, you know, usually, uh, and uh, typically in the ER, they'll use the 1% lidocaine um, just because it kind of numbs as you inject it, so it's not quite as painful. Um, for IV administration, it can be given as IV piggyback. Uh, you put it in 50 mLs typically, maybe 100 mLs if you really wanted to, and you could run it over 30 minutes. Um, or it can be given as an IM push. You can put it in 10 mLs and, and push it over three to five minutes. Um, yeah, for the for the young for the young kids, the peds patients, usually if they're less than five or so, we'll do a 40 milligram per mL concentration. So say the dose is 120, it would be 40 to one, so you'd end up with a three mL dose, and. Uh, uh, if the unit that the patient's in has a, a syringe pump, you can hook it onto that. And you can still run it over 30 minutes, even though it's only, you know, 3 mLs or what have you. Uh, that's how we typically treat the pediatric patients on Rocephin. If the kid's over 7 or 8 or what have you, then you can just put it in a, in a piggyback in 50 mLs and, and run it over 30 minutes. It's not a big deal. All right, in terms of uh, pregnant and nursing mothers, it's pregnancy category B, and small amounts of rocephin can be found in milk, so use caution. Uh, in terms of adverse reactions, it's generally well tolerated. There's not a whole lot to talk about with this one. Um, basically, it, it really just all boils down to if patients are allergic to it or not. Um, there's not a lot of cross sensitivity between your ampicillins and your penicillins and things that most people claim to be allergic to and your cephalosporins, especially as you go from your first to second and second to third and third to fourth uh, generation cephalosporin, uh, the cross sensitivity becomes less. I don't remember the numbers, but it's, you know, it's a small amount, 15% or something like that. And uh, we'll do a video on some of the carbapenems later. They're even smaller. I think it's like 1% cross sensitivity between like a uh, penicillin allergy and meropenem. So it's basically non-existent. All right. So in conclusion, um, like and subscribe. Uh, Rocephin is, um, if I had to guess, it's going to be kind of your go-to ER uh um, antibiotic for someone with uh, respiratory issues. Um, a lot of times whenever it gets speciated, they get patient that gets on the floor, the labs come back. Um, maybe they have a bloodstream infection or a UTI or whatever. Rocephin is, is definitely a go-to for these. Um, now if a patient's in the nursing home or they're in and out of the hospital all the time and you suspect that it could be pseudomonas, um, then you would want to use something like a Zosin or a Cefepime or, you know, in worst case scenario, a Meropenem, something like that, uh, because the, the uh, obviously pseudomonas will be resistant, but even, you know, maybe it'll be a resistant E. coli or something along those lines. Um, yeah, so I would say for, for most patients, non-nursing non home, non-in and out of the hospital patients, Rocephin will be one of the first antibiotics that they receive in the hospital.